team a Saturday afternoon. All good, though, as the Yankees take the field. Why don't we take a look at the Rays starting lineup, brought to you by TikTok. Yandy Diaz leads off. Juan DeFranco bats second and plays short. And Harold Ramirez does damage against lefties. He's the DH. Middle third, Rosarena, Paredes, and Walls. And the bottom third, Margot, Siri, and Mejia. And that lineup is facing that guy, Nestor Cortez. This will be his eighth start, 3-2, and 4.74, more than a strikeout per inning. But why don't we check out the entire Nissan pitcher scatter report? Well, he's back on track, hopefully, for the Yankees after his worst start as a Yankee against Texas. He did bounce back Monday against Oakland with five innings, only giving up two runs. And hitting 176, Nestor's cutter has been really good this year. Batters hitting only 176 against it. And as a Yankee, he has six starts against the Rays. It's uh, 3.15 ERA, three runs or fewer in five of the six starts. So he has handled them well. Uh, let's see uh, the footwear today. What do we have? Oh, look at this. The luck of the Irish. Look at that. Uh, is there any mustache? Uh, no. Oh, it's a, it's, a, it's a harness racing horse. We'll have to get to the bottom of that. <laughs> Love it. Every uh, every game a different one. Diaz is ready. Cortez is ready. And let's do it here in the Bronx. Grounded to third and under the glove of LeMayu into left field for a base hit. I want to check out the Yankees defense presented by Buick. So we'll start with LeMayu at third. Volpe's in short, Torres at second, Rizzo over first. Higashioka behind the plate in the outfield. It's kind of Falefa in left, Bader in center. Jake Bowers, the right fielder with Aaron Judge dh in today. Well, you see DJ LeMahieu, as he did last night, kind of in between, ball by him. And, you know, early in the game, you see the infield very kind of, I wouldn't say muddy, but dirty. But you know what? You can make up with it with an easy double play. Little around the horn. That gets it done. And Torres really took his time. He knew he had the time. All right, let's check out the keys to the game, Paul, brought to you by your local Kia dealers. Well, we were talking about it, Michael. Best win of the year. I thought last night was an exciting night. I thought it was their best win. You use that momentum today and keep it close. The Yankees have had a lot of success against the bullpen from Tampa Bay, who is very good. But uh, you don't always have to beat the star pitcher. You got to hold them in the park. All five runs last night were on home runs, and the Rays lead the major leagues with 79 home runs as a team. And the second highest total is the Dodgers with 66, so they lead by a lot. Yankees have 54 home runs. There's a strike. One and two on Ramirez. Ramirez hitting 370 against lefty pitching. There's a ground ball of Volpe, backs up, fields, steps, fires, and an easy first inning for Nestor Cortez. No runs to hit, nobody left. Yankees coming to bat. DH, Anthony Rizzo, the star of yesterday's game, he'll bat third and play first. Then it's DJ LeMahieu, Harrison Bader, and Isaiah Conopalefa. That's the middle of the order. The bottom third, Anthony Volpe with a big home run in yesterday's game. Jake Bowers in right, and Kyle Higashioka will catch, and he's going to bat ninth. And they are going to face one of the best pitchers in baseball, and that is Shane McClanahan. The numbers speak for themselves, so I will not speak them. Let's check out the Nissan Pitcher Scatter Report. Well, the numbers are ridiculous, Michael. He's <laughs> 7 0, 1.76 ERA, 58 strikeouts in 46 innings, and a four spot. All four of his pitches way above average fastball, curve, changeup, and a slider. But the Yankees have had success in his career. They're 4 and 2 against him career wise. Swing and a miss. He has swing and miss ability, as Paul said, on all four of his pitches. That's how good he is. Now, the one thing that might not be up to snuff with the great ones, he walks too many batters. High fly ball, right center field. Margot back. He's on the track. He'll make the play for the first out. Let's check out the Rays defense presented by Buick. It's, it's one of the better defenses in the majors, a Rosarena in left, Syrian center. You just saw Margot in right. Infield Paredes, Franco, Walls, and Diaz. That's third to first. Francisco Mejia behind the plate, catching Shane McClanahan. 
Well, Aaron Judge has broken out the pink spikes a day early. Pitch is high. Since coming off the IL, Patty is his mom. Judge is three for 14 with a double. He's yet to leave the yard. We got to meet Patty a lot on camera last year. Huh? She was uh, on camera as much as Aaron Judge, and what a way that family handled his wonderful year of 62 home runs. All right, Sean Barber is the home plate umpire. He's pitcher friendly, so Paul doesn't like him. Tenth big league season, more high strikes on lefties, more low strikes on righties. Three and one. Mike Molinsky, the first base up. Alan Porter, the crew chief at second. And Nate Tomlinson is over at third. <laughs> Clip the inside corner a little low, but must have caught the line. Three and two. Lights are on here at the stadium. Kind of a cloudy day. So let's take a look at the game time weather presented by Bigelow, the official hot tea of the Yankees. 77 feels hotter. Chance of rain 25%. Humidity 40%. The wind is going out to left. Paul, you have a pink tie for tomorrow? You got to wear a pink yeah, tie. I was just thinking that. It's yeah. funny. You're reading my mind. I'm seeing, the, you know, the pink belt from Diaz on first base. Yep. All of a sudden, Aaron Judd bringing out the pink spikes. I've got a pink tie ready. Do you? Yeah. I'm going to have to dig deep. I don't know. Maybe I'll just wrap that belt around my head. <laughs> and Judge works a walk. McClanahan has the sixth highest walk rate in the American League. He walks 10.6% of the batters he faces. I'm sure that's the Yankee game plan. Make him throw pitches. Mm -hmm. Shows you how good he is when he's up there that much and walks. You know, <laughs> they don't score anyway. I mean, with a 1.76 ERA, not a lot of guys crossing the plate. There's Anthony Rizzo, second multi-home run game of the year last night. So why don't we check out the Genesis hitter scatter report. Well, that's very easy. The Mandalorian. He had a great night last night. What a night it was to watch in his last 10 hitting 3675 six multi hit games and lefty no problem. He's hitting 371 against lefties this year which is the highest lefty lefty average in the major leagues. So Mejia got hit on a foul back off the bat of uh, Anthony Rizzo. So while he's recovering, we'll take a look at those home runs. Yeah, that was the first hitting off the opener. Pulled his hands in and just got it out of there. But boy, what a dramatic bottom of the eighth game winner. I don't know that I've heard this place that loud this year, Michael. I, I think that was it right by, last night. And Paul, a lot of guys in the clubhouse spoke about that after the game, saying it was almost like a playoff atmosphere here in May with the back and forth nature of the game, realizing the Rays leading the AL East. It just felt a lot bigger than perhaps some May games have felt in the past. One and one. You know, Michael, as we look around, you talked about Aaron Judge and Nestor Cortez and their shoe game. And Meredith has a shoe game. She's got a pair of Nikes that goes with every dress she puts on. Mm -hmm. She really does. Nothing's by accident with Meredith. No. She doesn't just slip on sneakers and, oh, wow, by the way, it matches. No, no. <laughs> I walked in today and said, well, what is this a case a basketball game breaks out? Wow. Uh, you never know. You just never know, Paul. <laughs> never know when I'm going to have to, you know, spot up, hit a three. Ah. Post up, Michael. He's real slow in the post. No doubt I can back him down in the post. <laughs> Time Timeout there for Rizzo. Grounded and grabbed there by Franco. And he gets the force at second. Franco just flipped it to Walls to get the force on Judge coming in. Yeah, kind of an awkward play. Both middle infielders kind of 
trending towards the ball. The Yankees checked. He is out. But Walls, good decision to give up on the ball and get to second base and actually barehanded to get Aaron Judge. LeMahieu takes a strike on one. You just see plays like that, Michael, especially, you know, in a, in a, a ground ball man on first base that, you know, the middle infielders used to be so vulnerable. I mean, trying to barehand that ball with Aaron Judge breaking that, you know, the rules have changed. I mean, he could have been in left field years ago because that was your job as a base runner. huh? Listen, Paul, I don't want to see anybody get hurt. I mean, these, mm -hmm. these people come to see the stars, but I, I liked it without the protections. Well, it, it, there definitely was an art to, to getting down there, taking out the second baseman or shortstop to not let them turn a double play. Lined at Franco. He'll put it away for the final out. No runs, no hits, no errors. One man left on base. We played one. No. And a Rosarina will lead off for the race. Shows bunt, takes a strike. Well, I've gotten to the bottom of, uh, of Nestor's shoes, and I don't mean the spikes. He and Joe Lee, longtime clubhouse attendant working on the Yankee side, they bought a, uh, a racehorse together. That's the racehorse on the cleats, and the name of the horse is on the uh, right foot. So he's honoring his, uh, his horse. <laughs> Joey Lee has been doing that for years. I can remember him talking about horses back when, when I was entering the clubhouse. It's funny, I met somebody in Florida not too long ago, said he was partners with Joe Lee. So, hey, we need a horse, Mike. Nice play by LeMayu. Can he get a Rosarina? No. Beat it out. Now, I was just thinking the same thing, Paul. We've known Joe Lee, what, 30 years? Mm -hmm. We're not partners with a horse with him. Nothing. Never even been. Nestor's been here three, four years. Yeah. Well, I guess it tells what he thinks. <laughs> but good luck on the horse. Tam Major. And I want to thank uh, Matthew Stucco of Yes. Uh, he did his show, The Feed, with Nestor. It's not out yet. It will be out soon. And uh, Nestor told him the story of the horse. Thank you, Matthew. And Michael, I think you guys are leaving out an important fact in all of this. What's that? I imagine that Nestor Cortez certainly had some money in, involved in partnering with Jolie. You guys have to give money to well, be a partner. That's why Michael's out. Uh, I didn't want to bring that up, but right? anytime Michael has to reach his pocket, it, it's it, no. You have some nerve, Mr. <laughs> Alligator Arms. <laughs> yeah, no. They don't just ask you. There's a financial commitment involved oh, in yeah. that. I would, I would reach down to, to own a horse. I'd rather have a thoroughbred rather than a harness horse. But you want a guaranteed uh, like no, I Kentucky, want to go to the Derby, Kentucky Derby, Derby. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No, I, just run it. I don't care if they win. Uh, Could you imagine all of us at the Kentucky Derby? What a scene that would be. Oh, who would be doing the games? There's always a game the first Saturday in May. That is on the bucket list, though, Paul. I've been there. You like it? Chilled out. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, definitely an event. I don't know if I'd want to go every year, but, you know, back in the old days, we would always play that day game. Mr. Steinbrenner had horses, mm -hmm. and you know, they would always put it up on the scoreboard, and it was, uh, you know, it added to the excitement of the day. Line drive. It's a base hit to right center field. Bowers will field. A Rosarina will stop at second. Throw comes in the third. So back to back singles, first and second. Nobody out. Three hits against Cortez. Yeah, there's that cutter we talked about, but that ball's up in the strike zone. And when you want to bury this in on righties, this gives Paredes an opportunity, even though he was jammed, to stay inside the ball, push it to right. Speaking of cutters, I saw Mariano on the field today. Does he ever change? I mean, it's just it's great. He's aged. It's just, he's awesome. Here's Taylor Walls. Yankees in at the corners. Rizzo really coming in it from first. Pitch inside. You don't see Tampa Bay bunt much, but the Yankees have been playing bunt a lot against them. Wall steps out, takes a look to see if the bunt is on.
Boy, Rizzo was coming in on that first pitch. I mean, and, and when Walls doesn't square, you, your heart must be in your mouth. Well, Anthony Rizzo does play that. He kind of tries to field it in front of the pitcher and take away that easy move him over to third base. I'm sure you remember this. You were about my age then. <laughs> when when the Yankees and the Reds played in the World Series in 76. Uh -huh. Pete Rose was playing almost on top of home plate when Mickey Rivers came up. He took away a lot of Mickey's games. Yeah. There just has to be a fearlessness to do that. There's a line drive base hit to left field. A Rosa Rain around third. He's coming home. Here's the throw. He's in there. It's an RBI single for Walls, and it's one nothing Rays. Well, another jam shot, but another ball up in the strike zone. Nestor's going to have to really work on getting it in off the plate or down. You see this ball's elevated, and even though it gets towards the label, it gives a hitter an opportunity to drive in a run. Yankees down early. I talked to Rosarina on the field today and was just saying, you know, you, you pretty much do everything on a baseball field. I admire the way you play the game and, you know, just watching his first at bat and then moving over and then scoring easily his speed. I mean, he is a total package when it comes to a baseball player. Outside to Margot. Still nobody out. First and second. It's one nothing Rays. We're in the top of the second inning. Raised 30 and 10. That's 750 ball, by the way. Watch a Rosarena. He kicks his helmet. Oh. And it almost <laughs> went back on his head. That would have been a trick. That would have made some highlight wheels or reels there. Strike one, three and one on Margot. Now three and two. You know, again, a pitch that he got away with. His location right now, not where it usually is. I mean, ball out over the middle of the plate, elevated. That's not the way Nestor Cortez goes about business. That ball's right down the middle of the plate. Grounded to third. There's one. On to first. It's a double play around the horn. Moving to third is Paredes. Another big double play started by DJ LeMayhew and a big, big double play for Nestor. He has an opportunity to get out of this inning. And, you know, the, the way these games have gone, every time you get this situation, two outs, runners in scoring position, these are the at bats that have you know, pretty much decided the outcome of the game. It was Jose Siri swing and a miss. Good fastball for Cortez, 94 miles an hour. One and two. Paredes was too far down the line. Cortez stepped off. Now time by Siri. I just said his name, Paul. My phone went off. Of course. My phone wants to know what I need. <laughs> Nestor needs a strikeout or an out of any kind. And Siri comes through. Both of them do. But the Rays score a run on three hits. One man left. One nothing Tampa Bay. Issue.
or the Yankees would love to get him back by the West Coast trip at the end of this month. And Michael, you see him in the outfield earlier today. Yankees didn't really take batting practice today. Optional workouts for them on the field. He was doing some agility drills. And Aaron Boone was asked specifically in the pregame, do you intend on playing him in the outfield or is that just too risky? And he said, no, he believes that he is his best and he is his best health-wise when he plays him in the outfield. Now, I can't imagine he's going to play there every day, but he will continue to get some reps. Whether he does it when he first comes back remains to be seen. But you imagine they'll probably ease him into it by DHing a little bit and then having him in the field as well. And Meredith, he didn't hurt himself in the outfield. He hurt himself running the bases. So as a DH, he's going to run the bases. No doubt about it. And, and I think that's part of it. I think they think the more engaged he is, the more active he is, the less chance there is that he's going to have an injury like that when he tries to pick things up quickly from the batter's box. Well, they miss him. Just that threat in the middle of the order that you can't take, uh, take for granted. Pitchers have to really be careful pitching to him. And Michael, probably the closest to coming back as far as position players are concerned is Josh Donaldson. He was out there doing some defensive drills. He also worked in the outfield. Aaron Boone doesn't have a date for when he'll start his rehab assignment, but it could happen as early as next week. And I asked about Carlos Rodon, who had that cortisone shot on Tuesday, still not throwing. Aaron Boone said he hadn't checked in with him this morning, but should have more of an update in the afternoon as to whether or not that shot worked and he'll begin a throwing program. Well, can they use Severino and Rodon? Severino obviously is first up, and then uh, obviously they have to get Rodon started. High fly ball, center field. Siri back. He has plenty of room. Makes the play as Bader gave it a ride. One down. Let's take a look at the arsenal on McClanahan. Statcast 3D by Google Cloud. Well, like we talked about, I mean, he's got four pitches, and all of them are really good. I mean, he can overpower you with a fastball. He's got a great curveball and a tremendous changeup. So, I mean, that you add all that up, Michael. That's why he has the numbers he has. Well, it was sixth place in the Cy Young voting last year. Comes into the game with a 1.76 ERA now, 1.71. Ground ball is short. Two down. Let's take a look at the Yankee leaders brought to you by Citizens Made Ready. So McClanahan, since 2021, anyone with 250 or more innings, he's second with a 2.76 ERA to Shohei Otani. And Cortez is fifth with a 2.89 right behind Framba Valdez. There's a strike to Volpe. Swing and a miss, and the bat goes all the way behind Luis Rojas, the third base coach. You know, Michael, you see things in the game and you take yourself back. I don't ever, and I've seen it a lot, I don't ever remember doing this. I mean, I've been fooled on change-ups, obviously, but I never remember launching a bat, you know, in the stands or out in front. This must be the way you, you hold the bat or something. Isn't the whole key not to hold it so tight? Yeah, you want it, obviously, not in the palm of your hand, out on your fingers where you can really release the bat and you get a more bat speed. That's where, you know, if you see a young high school hitter, they usually have it dug in their hands, and it just makes it a little slower. You get it out towards your fingers. You, your bat is much quicker. One and two on Volpe. Had that big home run yesterday. Also an RBI single later on in the game, so he was a big part of the Yankee win. And he goes down on strikes, tipping the ball into the glove of Mejia. Yankees go down in order. Game. one nothing Rays. Mejia leads off the number nine batter. Right in on the hands, fouled straight back here. 0-1. You know, you think about it growing up, Mike, when you came to tons of games when you were, you know, small, little. It, it, that wasn't the thing. It wasn't the fashion thing. It, everybody didn't have jerseys with mm -hmm. names on them. And, and it's become such a big thing where, you know, I drive into the ballpark. It's really fun to see, you know, guys sporting everybody uh, on the team, ex-players. It, it's just, uh, it's part of the game now. It's part of the fashion. 
Oh, you look around, uh, let's say maybe 30, 40% of people in the ballpark have jerseys on. Here's Diaz, singled the left just under the glove of LeMahieu in the first inning. Oh, and one. Hey, you look at this lead one to nothing and you really got to feel like the Yankees are, are very fortunate in Nestor Cortez. I mean he's had a couple double plays. Uh, the way this offense explodes talking about Tampa Bay. I mean, they, they, they could have thrown up some numbers already. One and two. Now Tampa Bay didn't really make any substantial additions offensively but they have changed their output substantially on the offensive side and it's really really more or less a mindset rather than anything else Paul they used to really stress mechanics mm -hmm. swing plane you know uppercut you know launch angle the whole deal. It's not that they've gone away from that, but what they stressed the offseason and a lot in spring training was what pitches to swing at. They wanted to free the mind of thinking mechanics, 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 and just pick out a good pitch to swing at. Grounded to short, Volpe. And what's amazing to me is everybody bought in, and it's paid off for everybody. Yeah, I mean, obviously, when you get off to a start like this, you have to credit you know, the, the, the organization, the hitting coach, and the, the hitting coach is kind of an interesting story. Chad Matola. And Chad Matola was the number one pick for the Reds in 1992. He was the fifth pick. You know who number six was? Mr. Jeter. That would be Derek Jeter, yeah. So Chad Matola went right before Derek Jeter in the 1992 draft. Yeah, there's been a consistency on the Rays staff. Matola's been there a while. Kyle Snyder's been there a while. So the message has been mm -hmm. consistent from year to year. Strike three. Good inning. As Franco down looking and Cortez retires the Rays in order. One, two, three. We'll go to the box. Getting a start against the lefty McClanahan. And ball gets loose in right field. Retrieved by Margot. Thrown into the stands. And now we're ready to go. Wanna know? That one is looped into center field. It's a base hit in front of Siri. So they give Bowers a start against a lefty, and he gets a leadoff single here in the third. I think Garrett Boone is really impressed with the swings he's seen from Bowers lately. Again, I mean, a level swing, even though you get jammed, give yourself an opportunity to jam shot that into the outfield. The more it bats, the more hits he gets under his belt. Obviously, the better he's going to be for this team. Here's Higashioka. Such a good changeup, 0 and 1. One and two. It's a long name from one armpit to the next. Runner goes, popped up foul, and out of play. You know what you got away from, Michael, when you think about baseball, and, and the, the shifts have kind of taken it away in the home runs. But, you know, just the situational hitting. 
And, you know, now that Higgy has two strikes, look at the right side of that infield. I mean, in the old days, that was your, your target. I mean, you wanted to force the ball to that hole because you had a good opportunity to get it to right field. And a walk by Higashioka, and the Yankees have something going here. First and second, nobody out. You know, we mentioned the uh, the four pitches that McClanahan has. So Tyler Kepner wrote a story in the Times about McClanahan, and and all four of his pitches have different velocities: 97, 87, 86, 82. And McClanahan said it's hard to be on time for all of those velocities. That's what makes him so effective. Well, when you start at the top at 97, that, that kind of sets up everything else. But uh, we talked about his four pitches all well above average. High five ball center field. Siri will make the catch. Tagging is Bowers just draws the throw. Here's Aaron Judge. Walked in the first inning. High fly ball center field. Just missed that one. Siri drafts back, makes the catch, tagging his Bowers and goes to third. Yeah, look at Aaron Judge, and he seems to be getting closer and closer, and that's what this team needs is Aaron to judge to go through one of those hot streaks. I mean, he hit a couple balls last night, just missed that one. This is not back to where he was 10 days ago when he went on the I.L. yet. Now, this is one of those spots where Rizzo shortens up and just tries to Take the ball to left field and drive in a run. Let's see what he's doing here now against McClanahan. He grounded to short in the first. Let's take a look at how his hits travel on Snapcast 3D. He pulls 26, up the middle, 6, the opposite field, 12. So 44 hits. Yeah, a lot of those opposite fields are against lefties, too, late in the count, where he really closes off. Tries to shoot the ball the other way. It was interesting last night. He was talking to Meredith on the field, and he said, you know, I was thinking about Adam, and, and, and I sold out on the pitch. So he does guess along with pitchers. But then as he gets to a two-strike count, kind of shortens up, and we'll use the whole field. And that whole thought process, it was interesting what he said to Meredith. As he's walking up, he's changing his mind. You know, he got me on that pitch. I don't think he'll do it again. But then when he... Got into the box and said, yeah, I'm going to sell yeah. out for that pitch. 3 and 0. Oh, they call a strike on the inside. And you can see Rizzo didn't like that call. 2 and 1. Now 3 and 1. Bowers at third, Higashioka is at first. It's one nothing Rays. We're in the bottom of the third. LeMahieu's on deck. Three and two with the foul ball, so Higashioka will be free to go at first. Three, two, two outs. Fouled off the other way. And you see with this two strike approach, even full count, I mean, he's choking up on the bat, a little shorter swing, put the ball in play, give yourself a chance. But McClanahan, not your normal lefty. Very, very tough. Right 
I think Rizzo is using this timeout more than any other player on the Yankee roster. Hanging in there. I think McClanahan has seen enough of Rizzo using left field, and you see, even with two strikes, is really trying to keep the ball in. Fly ball shallow center. Here comes Siri. Took a step back and had a hustle to make the play. Siri with all three putouts as the Yankee strand two. In New York City. Perfect day to just jump in that fountain, although I know that's cool. Well, the Yankees had runners on first and second, nobody out in the third. They do not score, so it's still one nothing Rays. It'll be three, four, and five in Tampa Bay's order against Nestor Cortez. Harold Ramirez starts it off. Hits sharply. Oh, a diving play by LeMayu. Gets to his feet. Fires. Got him. What a play by DJ LeMayu. Anytime you steal an out like this, I mean, this was a bullet down the line. DJ stabs it. Well, this changes the whole inning by getting that first out instead of a leadoff double. There's a Rosarena. Jumps on the first pitch and skies it to left center. Coming on is IKF. He makes the play for the second out. Two pitches, two outs. Again, during a day game, Michael, it's very hard for infielders to pick up the ball. You got a lot of glare, a lot of uh, fans with white shirts on. See, Nestor Cortez loves it. Again, could have been a leadoff double. Now you've got two outs after two pitches. Pitch is high, 1 0. Oh. 2 0 oh on Paredes. One. You know, Michael, in the old days, you could get two quick outs in your job as a third hitter. Obviously, you you would take as much time as you could to give your pitcher a little break. But now, with the time clock, that's out of whack. So yeah, you know, you're basically taking a pitch, which he did. High fly ball, left field toward the line is kind of Falefa. Runs out of room. And a souvenir. And he gave the ball to the kid. Nice job. Three and two. See, Paul, there were good people out there. A lot of them. Yep. This is, we always see the stories of the bad stuff. There is a lot of good people out there. Look, that little guy, you'll never forget this day. Around this booth, Paul, there's some good people up here. Not everyone, but there's some. <laughs> Don't start picking them out. <laughs> I'm going to start ducking. <laughs> Fly ball, center field. Bader is there and dead center puts it away. And another one, two, three inning for Nestor Cortez. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Ah, uh, phone's blowing up. I know one of these. I guys. know one of these people, too. I think you know him better. <laughs> I have a lot of talks with him, you know. <laughs> See, you kept in contact with him. <laughs> so I think we know one. So do you know the other? I'm scrambling right now. Okay. Because I'm not sure I have that one. Both of the players are ex-Yankees.
There's a base hit right through the right side. LeMayu with a single. You know, good baseball can play in any any generation. Like when we were talking earlier about situational hitting, look at that. I mean, the right side's open a little bit. Take a ball down. Watch this ball is just guided to the right side. DJ LeMayhu can hit the baseball. So here's Harrison Bader. One and zero. Oh. Yankees have won seven of their last ten games, second time this season they've done that. Only games they've lost during that stretch. Tampa Bay Rays. Two in uh, St. Pete. And then one on Thursday. It was the third game of a four-game set. First two games split. One and two. Swing and a miss. Bader down on strikes. I'm not afraid. Even late in the count to go to that fastball. Got this one by Bader. So here's Isaiah Kanafalefa. You know, a lot of people have asked the last couple of days, well, well where's John Sterling? And on Thursday, he had a little bit of a cold. Mm -hmm. And that's why he missed that. But this weekend, two of his triplets are graduating college. One today, one tomorrow. High fly ball on the left side. Franco back. And makes the play. Hustling back to first is LeMay. That was some play by Franco. Wow, he went a long way. It looked off the bat like an easy play, but kept drifting and drifting. And again, a uh, shortstop, you get to a, a point where you've gone too far. And, and Franco, we've talked about his talent as a player. A Rosarina, a great play last night. Anyway, his two boys of the triplets, one today, one tomorrow. Next week, his daughter, and that will free up his financial obligation. <laughs> no. He's, I mean, he, he used to stress about it. Three full tuitions wow. for four years. And they didn't go to any uh, inexpensive schools. No. Yeah, they, they, they made dad work. But, you know, when you started that story and talked about his triplets graduating from college, that makes us feel young. Unbelievable. One and two, so congratulations to the Sterling family. All four of his children, college graduates. One, two. Swing and a miss. That'll do it here in the fourth. No runs you hit. One man left on base. We're going to the fifth inning. One nothing raise. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. There's a strike. That whole inning's different if that falls in. Swing and a miss. Walls down on strike. So Cortez has found his group. Yeah, much better. You see, he's up and down, out and away. We talk about Franco. Got a bare hand at this one. Kind of the same play, but. Missed the glove, caught it with the bare hand. Uh, remember Kevin Mitchell years ago? Yep. St. Louis did that. Mm -hmm. 
Margot takes a strike. He has a 2.5 wins above replacement number this season. Tied for the best in the American League with Otani. Remember that Otani's number is pitching and hitting combined. And Franco is just playing the field. Two and one. Foul back, three and two. We're in the fifth inning. It's one nothing Tampa Bay. Their run came in the second RBI single by Walls. The third of three straight singles to open up the second inning. But he got a double play and a strikeout to escape further trouble. Since then, mowing him down. Ooh, Barber twitched. You don't want a barber to twitch. No, he might lose an ear. <laughs> Again, he's pitching much better down in the strike zone. Just misses there, does not get the call. Looks like a good call. So here is Jose Siri. Sky the other way on the run is Bowers into the corner, but it's in seats. You know, you, know, you talked about Kevin Mitchell. Let's take a look. Yeah, and you know what, Kevin Mitchell, if you remember, he was one of the better hitters in, in the game for three or four years. He didn't like the leather much. He just went ahead and barehanded it, but uh, there was a time where he was. Arguably the best hitter in the major leagues. I mean, he left the Mets, went to the Giants, and just became a presence at the plate. Pitch high two and one. Series struck out in the second inning. Tampa Bay has scored 245 runs this year. They've given up 124, so that's a plus 121 run differential. One of the best in baseball history after this many games. Now a little bit upstairs, three and one. Looks like he's really paying a lot of attention to Margot over at first base. Margot does have five stolen bases on the year. Three and two. Yankees are 11 and five in the last 16 home games, so. Trying to keep that roll going. Time called by Siri. I think that got Higashioka on the backswing. Siri checked on him. 
Well, these are such big outs because you got Siri, then you have Mejia, and then the, the lineup turns over. And then Diaz, Franco, Ramirez, or Rosarena. I mean, you're looking at four consecutive 300 hitters. So it's there's a lot of pressure to get through the bottom of this lineup and get a fresh slate when that lineup turns over. And that's ball four on a pitch clock violation by Nestor Cortez. Took more than the 20 allotted seconds. So Matt Blake will go out and settle down Cortez. And for those that don't know, the umpire is wearing a pack on his body. So he can't be looking at what he has to be looking at and also at the clock. So it buzzes when it hits zero. So if the pitch hasn't been delivered, he jumps out, puts his hands up, and said, that's a violation. So that's what happens. It's not like he's checking the, uh, the clock out in center field and watching the pitcher at the same time. That would be impossible. Did you have an old pager? Remember those? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't get paged much, wasn't it? From for like workers and stuff. You, you'd page guys to get stuff done. And right, but then it then it started going to the general populace, and it, 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 for those that are young, it would buzz, and you look at it, and the number that wanted you to call them popped up on right. this little little apparatus, and then you went to a phone and called them. And that's right, people didn't carry phones with them. <laughs> We're now, showing our age. Now nobody. Doesn't have a phone with him, right? Yep. We have a hard line in our house because you have that when you, uh, you know, get the internet and cable. Mm -hmm. It's all part of the deal. Never use it, but we don't let the kids use their devices during the week. So my daughter wanted to contact one of her friends. Dad, if I don't have the device, how? I said, well, you know the number? She goes, yeah. I said, call them. On what? See that phone? <laughs> Use that. She goes, that works? The I said, landline. yeah. That. <laughs> First and second, one man out. Mejia, the ninth batter in the order. Throw to second. Nice pick there by Torres. As Margot was leaning. This didn't end up in center field. Good job by Torres to knock it down. Everything was going swimmingly, then the walk to Margot, and then the pitch clock violation walk to Syria, and now a 2 1 count on Mejia. And Paul said lurking is the top of the raise order. Three and one. He has really kind of lost his rhythm in the strike zone again and it started with Margot and then it seemed like he put a lot of concentration. Margo is a base runner and now he's kind of lost the strike zone. Lined in the left field. It's a base hit in front of IKF. They will hold Margo at third. Throw comes into LeMahieu and that'll load the bases with one out and Diaz coming up. Again, you pitch behind, then you have to start hitting the middle of the plate. Ball gets in a little bit, but lined to left field. IKF stays back, but. They're not going to take any chances with that lineup turning over. Now you've got bases loaded with the big boys coming up. Diaz swings and misses. Cordero heating up. This happened in a hurry. He's lost the strike zone. Two.
two and one. Has slowed down his pace. And has lost his command. And that one's drilled deep to left field. Going back, kind of Falefa, turning, looking, see ya. A grand slam by Diaz. And just like that, 5 nothing Tampa Bay. Well, this is a team that you do not want to pitch behind, and that, that's what Nestor has done this inning. And again, you load the bases, nowhere to put Diaz, his 10th home run of the year, and his 24th RBI with the grand slam. Those are his numbers this season. And this was a guy essentially not a home run hitter. That is a uh, a big blow against the Yankees with McClanahan on the mound. Yeah, Michael you were talking about how he has really tried to elevate the ball now. I mean back his career high in 2019 was 14. He's got 10 already. So obviously he has made some adjustments at the plate. And they're coming through. This team is uh, is not shy. Mm -mm. They have had a lot of fun and all the, out of that fun uh, you know they've got a lot of celebrations a lot of things and you know, I'm not going to say irritate other teams but when you're playing that well sometimes uh, it, it's just easier to run the bases and get it over with. Well if it irritates teams I got to stop them. Mm -hmm. These teams don't like each other anyway. I mean, you look back at when this kind of rivalry started, and it was probably when CC Sabathia kind of retaliated and hit a couple players. And you know, since then, uh, and because of the the competition in the American League East, these two teams have been going at it. Fly ball in the right center. And that's going to be in there and bounce up against the wall played out there by Bader and Franco has himself a double. And Aaron Boone has seen enough as we said this unraveled so quickly. You know when he struck out walls. Nine batters in a row he'd retired then a walk to Margot Siri. Mejia single and a grand slam off the bat of Yandy Diaz. So Nestor Cortez's day is done. Yankees go to the bullpen. And Jimmy Cordero will come on to replace Nestor Cortez. Runner at second, one man out here in the fifth inning. Four runs in. And it's such a, a, a true thing to say and that's why it's a cliche because people say it a lot. So you win a game like last night you go wow Yankees might have momentum. Well momentum only goes as far as your next day starting pitcher. So Nestor Cortez unraveled here in the fifth and the six five win from yesterday is, is in the rearview mirror. Right. He had you know, the third and fourth he finally kind of found his rhythm control wise but early in the game and then especially here in the fifth uh, you know just lost command of, of both his fastball and his cut. Fastball. Ramirez with a fly ball of Bowers. Tagging is Franco. He's going to go to third. And the throw not in time. So Nestor Cortez, five or more runs allowed, two starts this season. He'd done that once in the previous two seasons, over 42 starts. Here is a Rosarena with a runner at third base. Ground ball, diving play there by LeMay who gets to his feet, fires, got him. 
A Rosarena thinks that he beat it out, but the first base umpire Molinsky punched him out, and Kevin Cash is calling for a check of the play. And it will be overturned, and that'll be another run for the Rays. Tampa Bay is challenging the outfall at first base. Yeah, this is uh, kind of a no-brainer here. Rosarina gets down the line quick, clearly safe at first base. He's pointing up at the scoreboard right now to show, hey, I was safe. Review. The call in the field is overturned. The runner is safe. Tampa will retain their challenge. So they challenge and it is successful. They overturn the call at first base, so that allows Franco to score. Now Tampa Bay leads 6 0. Tell you what, when a Rosarena smells hit, he gets down the line. Yeah, I've noticed pretty much the whole team, Michael. They get out of the box, they get down the line. You know, they put pressure on the defense. If you bobble the ball anyway, I mean, this ball was hit hard. He's out in front a little bit. DJ got rid of it quick. And Rosarena just outran the baseball. So here is Paredes, the ninth batter to come to the plate. All in one. Five runs in the fifth inning, six nothing Rays over the Yanks. Off 0 and 2. And Paredes calls timeout. And the pitch. Outside one and two. So the home run by Diaz, the 80th home run by the Rays this year. 14 more than the second place team, the Dodgers, with 66. Ground ball, LeMayo getting a lot of work. And he gets Perinus for the final out. But the Rays score five. They'll try to dig at him. And Jake Bowers leads off and takes a strike from Shane McClanahan. McClanahan has given up two hits and a couple of walks. The Yankees have left four runners on base. Now the first two batters are on in the third, first and second, nobody out. But three fly balls to Siri ended that. And then LeMayu let off the fourth inning with a single, and McClanahan got the next three. So just one runner in scoring position over the first four innings. Three and one. So, Mike, I'm going to get your opinion on this. Mother's Day tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. Does Jody listen to all the games? I don't want to break any surprises or anything. Not every okay. minute, but so I, I want to know where you are on this point. So I've got some friends that are like, what you get you for your, your wife? She's not my mother. Ooh, but what is that? I mean, uh, she's a mother of your children. Some people think that you only buy for your mother, but you know, you got to spoil, you know, your wife who's a mother of your children also, right? 
I would think so. That's the way I'd roll. And since my kids are 8 and 10, they're not exactly going shopping. <laughs> you got to pick up three. Then. Right. All right. I just want to know if we're on the same. Oh, page. absolutely. Yeah. Being a mother is not easy. Woo. One and one on Higashioka. He walked in the, the third inning. Rip foul. Nice play. Pick down there, left field line. It just seems like McClanahan is kind of on cruise control now after that big five inning, five run inning at the top of this inning. I mean, it's just like he can use all his pitches just to continually get out. High fly ball, left field. A Rosarena turns and looks. See ya. A two run home run for Higashioka. Yankees on the board. It's 6 2. A big hit for the Yankees and Higgy is third of the year, seventh and eighth RBI. But, you know, somehow all of a sudden a swing of the bat puts you back in the game. So, so much for cruise control from McClanahan. Now all of a sudden, if you're the Yankees, are like, hey, we're on the board now. Let's continue to battle here and see if we can give ourselves a chance by the end of this game. Torres takes a strike. Quickly, 0-2. Oh, fastball right there, and Higgy didn't miss it. One and two. Two and two on Torres. Two on home run, nothing to sniff at against the guy with a 1.76 ERA coming in. So with one swing, you surpass how many runs he gives up per game. Well, the Yankees are up 6 nothing last Sunday with their best on the mound. And the Rays came back, so maybe the Yankees can return the favor against the Rays' best. Up 6 nothing. now it's 6-2. Three and two. Aaron Judge on deck. And the pitch. He walked him. So the Yankees trying to scratch and claw their way back into this one. And that'll bring Snyder, Kyle Snyder, the pitching coach, out to talk with McClanahan as Judge comes up. 
Yeah, it looks like the bullpen's going to start getting warmed up for Tampa Bay. All of a sudden, McClanahan with that big lead. He relaxed a little bit too much. And now with Aaron Judge at the plate, who just missed one his last time up. And the fans are starting to get a little antsy to get back into this game even closer. Well, Judge has been a tick off since coming back off the IL. He's three for 15. Only one extra base hit, a double. Oh, and one. High fly ball, right center, going back, one go, track, wall, see ya! A home run for Judge, a two run shot, it's 6 4 Tampa Bay. Folks, sit down. We got a game. And uh, Aaron Judge, you can see this coming. In the last couple of days, his swing to be coming better and better. Just missed one his last time up. Did not miss that one. His seventh of the year, 17th and 18th RBI. And all of a sudden now, he got a two run game. Seventh home run, 17th and 18th runs batted in. And his first home run since April 19th. That one was against the Angels. The 1 0 to Rizzo. Strike. So just like that, two run bombs get you back in games. One and two. A cut fastball, but a good sign that Aaron Judge stays inside. When he hits it, it doesn't matter what part of the ballpark, easily into the seats. Lined in the left center field, that is going to be in there for a base hit. Cut off in the gap by Siri. Here comes Rizzo, going for two, and he'll make it. It's a double for Rizzo. And that will knock McClanahan out of the game. And he stayed in on him all game. And Rizzo, to, I mean, just stayed on the plate, drove this to left center field. First pitch he'd seen away. Again, this has become a big inning for the Yankees to get back into this game. So Rizzo knocks out McClanahan, who came into the game 7-0, 1.76. Even if the Rays hold on, he will not qualify for the win. Judge goes yard, puts a two spot on the board. Yankees have scored four. Still nobody out, runner at second. Higashioka home run, Judge home run, double by Rizzo, and McClanahan knocked out of the game. Now they bring in Ryan Thompson, the sidewinding right-hander. 12 games so far this year, and he'll face LeMayu with Rizzo at second. 6 4 race. 1 0. First start allowing three or more runs this season. Last five batters reached safely, four runs. Runner at second, his responsibility. Swings to the pitch way out of the strike zone. We went over in the scouting report where you know the Tampa Bay bullpen one of the best in the majors but the Yankees have had a lot of success coming into today against their bullpen grounded up the middle Franco fields gets LeMay moving to third is Rizzo. Well the numbers kind of jump out at you Paul 
The Tampa Bay pen against the Yankees, 6.75. Against everybody else, 2.66. And now Jalen Beeks gets up. They have four lefties in the bullpen, but one of them is Fleming, so he's not available today. So it's Diekman, Poche, and Beeks. Rays bring the infield in with Bader at the plate and Rizzo at third. Swing and a miss. A little surprising with a two-run game. Huh? Bring the infield in in the fifth inning. Try to save that run. Big opportunity for Bader here. Put another run on the board. Popped up behind the plate. Mejia makes the play for the second out. Well, those are ones that drive you crazy as a hitter. You just foul it off straight up, and you think it's going to reach the seats. Ends up getting nothing done. Oswaldo Cabrera will come off the bench to pinch it for Conapaleva. And off the bench, it's Kyle Snyder to go over how they want to pitch him. Switch hitter batting from the left side. Uh, Cabrera with a big, big hit last night. So two home runs in this inning. The Yankees have now hit 22 home runs in 12 games in the month of May. And that's the most home runs of any team in the majors in that span. You look what has happened in this game, Michael, on both sides. The bottom of the order have come through. Siri and Mejia for the Rays and then Bowers and then the two run homer by Higashioka. And then it turns the lineup over, gives Aaron Judge an opportunity with a man on base. There's a strike to Cabrera. One and one. Connor Falafel was 0 for 2 while he was in there. Nine runs in the inning, five for the Rays, four for the Yankees. Yankees still alive here in the bottom of the fifth. Outside, two and one. Now they can be careful with Cabrera. They've got Volpe on deck. Another right handed batter against Thompson. And Cabrera certainly has the, uh, the pop to tie this game with one swing. Ball coming right in on the hands. He swings over the top, two and two. Yeah, that's the one defense sidearm that righties have against lefties to throw that breaking ball in underneath the hands and have it continue to go in off the inside corner. Cabrera called time. The pitch clock was winding down. It was at two seconds at that point. Rizzo's at third. Four runs in. High pop up on the right side. Walls is there. Called off by Morgot, and that will do it. But we have got ourselves a ball game. It started with Higashioka and his two run shot. And then Judge with a two run shot of his own. All of a sudden, 6 4 as we go to the sixth. Thank you, Bob. We go to the top of the six, six four Tampa Bay. Jimmy Cordero relieved Nestor Cortez in the fifth. He's still in there. Deals a ball to Taylor Walls. Taylor started off the fifth inning innocently enough by striking out, and then the bottom fell out for Cortez. He could not harness his command, and uh, they ended up putting a five spot on the board, making it six nothing. Yankees fought right back with four in the bottom of the inning, so it's six four as we go to the sixth. It'll be a battle of the bullpens. You know, we advertise as a battle of all-star left-handers, and those lefties struggle. Cabrera takes over in left field, pinch hitting for Kana Falefa. This 
strike three, walls down looking. Not enamored with the call. Now let's go around the majors. Cedric Mullins hit for the cycle last night in a win against the Pirates. Jose Altuve, boy, the Astros have missed him. Began rehab assignment, fractured his right thumb in the WBC. And the Cardinals starting to try to claw back. They've won four of their last five games. They were 3-15 and 15 in the previous 18. And there's the strike to Margot. Bunts up against the screen, 0-2. Well, the hitters have really gotten a hold on how to slow the game down with the pitch clock. They, they use their timeout. They, they use it judiciously. It's cool. They need some time to think about it. Now, I was talking with Bob Costas yesterday, and he said he's talked to a lot of baseball people who think that 15 seconds is too fast without anybody on base. It should be 20 across the board with anybody on base, even with somebody on base. And I disagree. I think 15 is fine. You know what? I, I, I think the rule changes have been so obviously good for the game. I, I, I have not talked to one person that has not enjoyed the season so far in the pace of the game. Well you played the game Paul. I mean does 15 seconds seem like it's rushed. You, you know what it, back when you were playing because you weren't used to it. Yes but these you know they had spring training they made their adjustments and, you know you don't see a lot of time clock and violations you the new normal becomes normal to you. And you do have that time out in your pocket mm -hmm. if you if you think all right this is a big moment I, I need some time to think about it you have that time out. You know, my point is, you know, when you turn on the highlights, the highlights haven't changed. You're seeing better defensive plays. You still see the big home runs, the well pitched games. Soft ground ball. Hope he makes the play. Gets Siri. And Cordero retires the raise in order. One, two, three. We'll go to the bottom of the six. Yankees down by two. Sense of uh, normal to this one. Doing a good job out of the bullpen. This little guy is channeling Paul O'Neill. <laughs> I didn't see you with your ice cream pregame today. No, that's only dinner. Oh, I'm sorry. Not day dinner. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> A bunt by Volpe. Paredes cannot make the play. Smart play by the youngster who's been struggling, struck out the first two times, and gets himself a bunt single. Boy, if you can do it and you have speed, it's a weapon. And Anthony Volpe put down a good bunt. Brady sees it early, but with his speed, he's got to try to barehand it. Doesn't come up with it. Now you've got a lot of options, but you're down two runs, so you got to make sure if you're going to steal, you get there. But still, leadoff single. Yankees putting pressure on Tampa again. Well, they're staying with Thompson against Bowers. They have beaks up. But the Yankees have three righties after that, so they'll see if Thompson can navigate Bowers. There goes Volpe. The throw to second. Not in time. Stolen base. He's 12 for 12. They're very aggressive. I mean, a big, big, tall right-handed reliever, usually slow to the plate. This ended up being closer than I thought it was going to be, but he's in there, and Anthony Volpe in scoring position. Looks like they're going to take a look at it. Yeah, they are going to challenge. Is there enough there to overturn? I'm not sure. I don't think so. I think that hand was there. Obviously, the, the ball was a great throw right onto his hip, but it looked like the hand had already touched the base. Bang bang. Don't see it Michael. I'm still I still got him safe. I, I don't think there's enough there. I mean I think if he was called out there wouldn't be enough there to overturn it to make it safe. What's funny is I'm looking around the stands. Everybody watching it on the big screen. They're giving the safe sign. The Yankee fans 
or with us, Michael. They think he's safe. I mean, from that angle, it, it just it looks like it was a quick tag. The ball was right there, but again, you cannot tell exactly when the hand hits. It was extended and then kind of bent, but it never left the bag. All right, here's the decision. After review, the call in the field stands. The runner is safe. Tampa Bay will lose their challenge. They tied for second in the American League with 12 stolen bases in 12 attempts. And the last Yankee to start off his career 12 for 12 is Joe DiMaggio. He was pretty good. But Joe did it over three years. <laughs> so a runner at second now, nobody out. And here's Bowers with a 1 0 count. He goes around. Again, that ball bearing in on the hands. Bowers one for one with a walk and a run scored. Line to left field coming on a Rosa Reina makes the play. Well, such a good swing by Bowers hit right on the nose. Rosa Reina we've seen run down a lot of balls. This ball just right at him a nice swing hard line drive nothing to show for it. Well, the Yankees will send up Willie Calhoun to pinch hit for Higashioka. And Snyder comes out to go over how to pitch him. It, it, it is amazing to me to see with all teams, even the Yankees. So somebody sends up a pinch hitter. Doesn't the catcher know the game plan for that pinch hitter? Every time there's a pinch hitter, a pitching coach goes out to go over it. Yeah, it's not like you got 150 options right. on the bench. You have three or four guys, right? And you start out with those six mound visits, they might have to cut that down. Because you never see anybody like run, run up oh. against it, right? Nope. Uh, if you're Volpe, now they're still stealing third with one out, obviously, in play. Marinaccio getting ready. Way outside. So at this one move you you're using two players off the bench Calhoun and then obviously Trevino has to come in and and catch that only leaves Aaron Hicks left on the bench. Fly ball left center. Catch is made by a Rosarena two down. Well, Kevin Cash kind of kept in. The big side winding righty for this this at bat right here with Glaber Torres turning the, lay, uh, the the lineup over. You got Torres and Judge, both right handers. Better matchup for Thompson. Strike on the outside corner. And Torres not in love with that call. I think he got quick pitched and he didn't think he was ready. Kind of argue with the umpire. Ah. One and one.
Volpe goes to third. He'll steal third. 13 for 13. No throw. They're not even going to attempt to throw there. It could end up in left field and the Yankees steal a run. But, you know, it does mean something because, you know, Thompson bounces a breaking ball or something, then Volpe can score here. There it is. Here he comes. He scores. He created that run on his own. It's 6 5 Rays. The more pressure you put on the defense, the more mistakes they will make. And uh, sometimes you just think that a stolen base means nothing. But then a run here for the New York Yankees. Now it's a one run game. But stolen base, stolen base scores on the wild pitch. Ray's just got bulky. <laughs> they did. Very nice, Michael. Keep that one in your holster. You might use that a lot in the next couple of years. That's behind Glaber. And he will go to first. Thompson's going to question if that ball hit him, but I mean, this ball completely behind Glaber Torres, and now you've got a great at bat from Aaron Judge coming up here. Another good swing with the Yankees ahead. You know, Michael, you go back, what, 20 minutes, half an hour ago? Six to nothing. You didn't think you'd see the fans on their feet. All of a sudden, this game has taken a, a, a change for the better for Yankee fans. Now, if they were on their feet, you probably thought they'd be leaving. <laughs> exactly. Ties him up. Could not hold up. 0 and 1. Judge with a home run his last time up. One for two with a walk. Two run shot, a seventh of the year, has 18 ribbies. Time runs at first, bottom of the sixth. Rounded foul. You know, not a bad time for Glaber, who has five stolen bases on the year, to take a chance. Two strikes, and even if you do get thrown out, you give Aaron Judge another at bat to lead off the next inning. Down 0 2 in the count. One and two. Drill deep to left field. There it goes. See ya. The Yankees lead seven six. A two run bomb by Judge. Yankees got the lead. Second home run of the day is eight. And a push bunt. It's going to be a base hit for Rizzo. Yankees doing it all here in the sixth. And a hanging breaking ball. No doubt about it. Aaron Judge better at bats recently. Great at bats today. Sean Bunt again takes a strike. Last Sunday, the Yankees up 6 0. The Rays storm back. This Saturday, Rays up 6 0. 
the Yankees have stormed back. They take a 7-6 lead. Well, you're starting to see that extension, and that's all about timing. Swing and a miss, one and two. They are really hanging with Thompson. I'll tell you what, the Yankees bunning, making him move around, stealing bases. He's got to feel like it's a circus out there for him. 29th career multi home run game. I saw earlier, they said Anthony Rizzo last night had 22. I thought, wow, that sounds like a lot. Well, Judge hadn't been in the league that long, and he's got 29. Eight home runs on the season now, 20 ribbies on the season. Mayhew calls time. So a 3 2 count. Rizzo will go from first with two outs. Bader's on deck. Runner goes. Inside. He walked him. And now Kevin Cash has seen enough from Thompson. The Yankees have punished the Rays bullpen over six games. So Thompson has given up the lead. Now he gives up the ball. And it'll be Javi Guerra coming on to face Harrison Bader. The Yankees have come all the way back. They lead 7-6 and looking for more. For real this year. Javi Guerra, 14th game, 17 walks and 13 innings. That's not what you want. So he inherits first and second, two men out. Rays bullpen 7.36 ERA in six games against the Yankees this season, 2.66 against all other teams. Bader is 0 for 3. Big hit here gives the Yankees some breathing room. Gives the Yankee bullpen some breathing room. 1 0. I'll tell you what, Garrett, I was watching him warm up. He was launching him to the screen. If you're Harrison Bader, you're like, wow, what am I walking into here? And then first pitch up and in. Our older Yankee fans will remember a uh, former reliever, Ryan Doran. Had really thick glasses, and his first pitch was always up on the screen while it was warming up. Just to get everybody a little loosey goosey. Rob Dibble did that on purpose. He would just fire one as hard as he could up on the screen. If you were on deck, you're thinking, wow, I hope that was intentional. 3 0 on Bader. Oswaldo Cabrera on deck. Yeah, take care, right, Michael? I green light him. <laughs> Foul back. <laughs> Secretly uh, messaging down the boom right now. All right. Very nice. Three one. There's ball four to load the bases. Michael, they got to be running out of mound visits here. Where, where is that mound visit? Right on the there scoreboard? to the right of errors. <laughs> MVR, mound visits remaining. Wow. Kyle Snyder's a long, likey guy. Yeah. That's, that's probably why. Well, he's usually a big, I cover the mouth guy, but not now. He's. 
Talking right to Guerra. So for two straight innings, the Yankees have sent nine batters to the plate. Here's number nine. Now it's one mound visit remaining. Bases loaded with the Yankees. Three runs already in. They lead 7-6. 1-0. Guerra in the other night when the, the Yankees were about to be shut out. Glaber Torres had a big two-run single. He, he struggled then. Gave up a couple hits, a couple walks, and a couple runs. Deals a strike, 1-1. One and one. Cabrera. Pinch hit for Kanapalafa last inning in the fifth. Uh, shallow fly ball right to end the inning. Two and one. There is no place to put Oswaldo Cabrera. Volpe started the inning with a bunt. He's on deck. A base hit to right field. Rizzo scores. LeMayu's coming home. Here's the throw. He's in there. It's a two-run single for Cabrera, and the Yankees lead 9-6. What a huge hit for Cabrera. He had a big hit last night that ended up driving a run in. A couple here. What a absolutely great game for the Yankees to come back. Now your second time around after pitch hitting, you feel a little bit better in the rhythm of the game and a huge hit for Cabrera. That is an aggressive send by Luis Rojas and just getting in there ahead of the tag was DJ LeMahieu. Great slide by DJ. Sneak that hand in. Here's Volpe. First and third now. Two outs. Outside. One and oh. The Yankees continue their bullpen beatdown of the race. Bader at third. Cabrera is at first. One and one. One, two. Volpe calls his timeout. Uh, Cabrera, you just can't say how, how big a hit that was to add a couple more. Now has 13 RBIs on the year. Bader dancing off third. Popped up on the right side. Diaz toward the stands, and it's about five rows back. Chris Muller warming up for the Rays. They have six righties, three usable lefties. Runner goes from first, swung on and missed, and that will do it. But the Yankees take the lead. Now, there are different ways to build a run. You could bunt, then you could steal second, you could steal third, and you could score in a wild pit. So that's little ball. You want muscle ball? There you go. Second home run for Aaron Judge. Yankees have come down 6 nothing, but they score four in the uh, fifth and five in the sixth. Trevino takes over behind the plate. And I'll tell you what, Paul, you're down 6 nothing. you're facing their best. I mean, everybody should always try, but 
mentally you could cash out and go, all right, we'll wait till Sunday. The Rays didn't do that against Cole. The right. Yankees didn't do that against McClanahan. Yeah, and you know, I just said in that inning, he can go on automatic pilot as good as he's, and all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. And and you know what the, it's interesting about it, Michael, is, you know, you got Aaron Judge, you got Rizzo, you got Stan, you got Cole. They're just so business like they should win. That was a gritty inning. Yep. You know, bunts, steals, the couple big home runs, but that just shows that this team, it showed me a lot. So here is Mejia against Marinaccio. And a strike. Mejia is one for two. Upstairs. Well, he appeared Thursday against Tampa Bay, and he allowed two earned runs in one third of an inning. Two hits, and he hit one batter. So that was a very un Marinaccio type of outing. Looking to bounce back here. And that one is looped into center field. It's a base hit for Mejia. And Bader will get the ball in, leadoff single for the number nine hitter. You know, we talk about Mejia coming in hitting 207. But Paul against the Yankees uh, in 23 games, he's 24 for 71. Different hitter. Some guys like the Bronx. He seems to be one of them. Here's Diaz. He had a grand slam in the fifth inning. Looked like it broke the game open, but it didn't. Upstairs. You think that's a message now that's a change up for Marinaccio to just got to see he turns it over and it just goes up and in. When you turn that change up over it almost looks kind of reacts like a two seamer it'll go up and in if it's up in the strike zone. Well, back in the fifth inning, there was a no doubter right here. And you're, you're right, Michael, that this time you kind of put your head down and think, wow, how are we going to come back from this? Well, a short time ago. Now all of a sudden you're up three runs. Well, he's got to get to work here because you're facing the dangerous part of the lineup. And up next is, is the guy with the number one war. At 2.5, that's Juan DeFranco. And he gets plunked. So an inauspicious beginning here by Marinaccio. I think Aaron Boone's getting the bullpen ready. He understands, I mean, how big a comeback this is. Another, that's a breaking ball that had no break to it. These two teams, when they play, it's like a heavyweight battle. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're just throwing haymakers, trying to knock each other out. There's some counter punching every now and then. And almost forget about heavyweight. It almost reminds me of Hagler Hearns that that first round. Remember? Nice, nice, yeah. Throw your best punch. Last man standing wins. I remember Hearns didn't do too well in that fight, did he? No, but you know what? It was one of the classic fights of all time. Pitch to Franco as a strike. In these six games, Yankees have hit five rays. And Bader is the only Yankee that's been hit. And under no stretch of the imagination did they hit Diaz on purpose. I mean, trying to protect the three run lead here is a breaking ball. They threw behind him with a change or up and in with a change, and then they hit him with a breaking ball. So. No one likes to get hit, but that's not on purpose. No. And you look at the games, other than the one blowout from Tampa Bay, they've all been close. Uh, all three games last weekend, one run games. I mean, you're not going to put extra men on base. 
No matter how big the rivalry is, when the you know the outcome of the game can be at stake. So two and one on Wanda Franco. First and second, nobody out here in the seventh. Soft ground ball. Rizzo flips to Marinaccio. They just got him. Just got him as the runners move up. Boy, again, Michael, you can't uh, say this enough. How Tampa, they get out of the box and they make every play close at first base. Molinsky got that right. Remember, Tampa's out of a uh, out of challenges. They use their challenge. Here comes Aaron Boone. He's seen enough. And with Marinaccio facing the rest requisite three batters, they're going to go to Clay Holmes now against Harold Ramirez. So second and third, one man out. Yankees lead by three. We're in the seventh. Stay right here. We've got a barn burner. They stayed Audi dealer today. What do you have, Paul? Uh, number 99 in the fifth. Welcome back. His first one since back off the IL, and then the big one in the sixth to give the Yankees the lead. Aaron Judge, fun to see him swinging the bat again. I feel for that guy in the second deck. Did you see that? He, he had the ball it. in his hands, then it dropped out and slowly rolled right off the uh, advertising board into the first deck. You know, Michael, you're getting real soft in your old age. You used to giggle and laugh at that. I cry commercials now. <laughs> Here's Clay Holmes. Yankees play the infield back. And Josh Lowe is pinch hitting for Ramirez against Holmes. Boy, Josh Lowe out of the lineup today. Now in, but uh, boy, he has had some kind of series. Eight RBIs in the first two games. Oh, and two. Now when he has command of his fastball then the slider really becomes just a, a devastating weapon. He's been depending on the slider more mm -hmm. than the fastball. That's why the slider to me is a really dangerous pitch and uh, you look last night. And this ball was hammered the other way. Off a of king but. He hung that last slider, and, and that's a pitch that can end up in the seats, and that's why it's a dangerous pitch to lefties. Back to the sinker there. One, two. Swing and a miss, got him. 97 mile an hour sinker. Big out, two down. Yeah, you make contact on a sinker, it's usually going to be on the ground. That slider scares me. I was glad to see him go back to back to back sinkers and a big strikeout from a hot hitter. So here is a Rosarena, second and third, two outs for the race. Top of the seventh, 9 6 Yanks, pitch. Strike. There's something about Holmes. Uh, you can tell the movement on his sinker. When it's down, he's very, very successful. When it starts tailing and just going horizontal, he gets hit. Upstairs. Last two sinkers were 95. The sinkers to low were 97. Soft ground ball up the middle and through for a base hit. That'll score two runs. A Rosarena with a two run single, and it's a one run game. Yankees up 9 8. Well, this is bad luck if you're Clay Holmes. It was a decent pitch. He broke his bat, it just found a hole. See that sinking fastball just shatters the bat. You see Volpe kind of shading over. This ball finds its way up the middle.
Another pinch hitter, Brandon Lau, is going to pinch hit for Isak Paredes. Yankees have to be careful. Lau's a good hitter, and he is 0 for his last 25. Dangerous bat who's in a slump. Upstairs, 1 0. So both of those runs that scored, those are on Marinaccio's slate, but most importantly, they're on the scoreboard. It's 9 8 Yankees now, top of the seventh. Line drive, it's a base hit over the leaping try of Volpe. That breaks an 0 for 25, the single off the bench by Brandon Lau, moving a Rosarena to second. You see Lau celebrating over at first base, sinker up in the strike zone though, and just hammered to left center field. So now the time run is at second base. Go ahead runs at first. That'll bring up Taylor Walls. Walls an RBI single in the second. Struck out his other two times up. So one for three. Grounded to Rizzo. He's going to take it himself and that'll do it. But the Rays, they're punching. They scored two runs on three hits. Two men left on base. At the end of six and a half innings of play, get up and stretch here at the stadium. Yankees nine and the Rays eight, but we'll stay right here as we honor America in the Bronx. Ladies and gentlemen, will you rise and remove your caps and please Direct your attention to the area behind home plate as the New York Yankees welcome an honored military guest. United States Army Private William Herbert from Farmingdale, New York, who served in the Korean War. The Yankees say thank you for your sacrifice and service to our nation. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Robert Merrill's rendition of God bless America. reached safely since the fifth inning combining for 16 runs for both of these teams. Jalen Beeks comes on and he will face Jake Bowers who swings and fouls it back. Three starts for Beeks as an opener 14 games overall you see his numbers he will walk batters. Owen oh two. When the bottom of the seventh inning, it's a one run Yankee lead. Check swing. So Lau takes over at second, Walls moves from second to third. Right in on the hands, fouled away. It's 
still one and two. See, Beek's wearing number 68. And Bowers wearing number 61 on this day in 1929. The then Indians and the Yankees played a game where it was the first major league game where both teams wore uniform numbers. Wow. Grounded foul. And Cleveland beat the Yankees four to three. And you think about numbers based on where you hit in the order. That's why right. Babe was three and Garrig was four. Bowers would have had to wait a long time. He's 61. <laughs> Swing and a miss. He goes down on strikes. All right. Here's the answer to that trivia question. Who are the only two players at 20 more home runs to steal 20 more bases in a season at age 38 or older? I'm sitting next to one. Paul O'Neill and I, I, maybe Ricky's the other? No, but it was another Yankee. Wow. Sheffield. And you walked away after that season. What are you thinking? <laughs> Maybe I wasn't. I don't know. <laughs> Trevino's first at bat. He takes a ball 1 0. Only one left on the Yankee bench is Aaron Hicks. Tucson to nominate your hero. Use the QR code right here on the right side of your screen or visit HyundaiSaluteToHeroes.com and tell us why they should win. Hyundai scoreboard, 9-8. Yankees lead, bottom third of the order. Luke Raley pinch hitting for Margot. And Holmes still in there, swing and a miss. And now the only person left on the bench for the Rays is their backup catcher, Bethancourt. Couldn't hold up on that one, 0-2. I was going to say, managers are pulling out all the stops. They're running out of a, you might have to suit up, Michael. I don't know if you're going with the Yankees or the Rays, but they might need you. I think if they're going to choose somebody in the booth, it would probably be you and then Meredith. Oh. <laughs> so you're hitting third? <laughs> yes. <laughs> One and two on the pinch hitter, Raley. Now, if Holmes can get through this inning, let's play the game we played last night. Who's closing this game? You've got Hamilton and you've got Wandy. Wandy picked up his first save of the year last night with a strong ninth inning. That's the guy who's got to make the decision. Up the middle, a base hit. So a pinch hit single for Raley. Well, I'm telling you what, I'm watching pinch hitters just go up there and have a great swings. It's not that easy, sinker. But again, middle of the plate. Holmes has great stuff, but I don't care how good your stuff is. You've got to stay away from the middle of the plate. So Raleigh's on first. Here's Jose Siri. In at third on the grass is LeMahieu. One and oh. Fly ball, shallow right field. Who's going to get it? Bowers with the call and the catch. One down. 
So here is Mejia. Abreu and Peralta. Off the glove of Trevino, and that allows the tying run to go to scoring position. And that's had two seamer. It just gets away from him every once in a while, and it's just, just no chance for a catcher looking for a ball sinking down and away to stab at it, just sailing up, up and away. One and one. One and two on Mejia. Mejia is two for three today. Does it seem like the Rays don't have nine guys in their lineup? Because every time I look on the on-deck circle, they're, they're they're turning the lineup over. You got Diaz again waiting on deck. Will be his fifth at bat. Swing and a miss. Got him on the slider. Two down. And here's the dangerous Yandy Diaz. Again, a good slider. See, this has downward action, too. Down and in, off the plate. Mejia, Michael, you talked about it. has been a hot hitter against the Yankees. So a big out right there. And again, this is the situation we keep talking about. Two outs, men in scoring position, one run game. Let's go over, see if we're going to change the way we're going to go about going at Diaz. Or stay with your sinker. And try to get him out late in the count with that slider. Uh, Diaz singled the left in the first home run, grand slam in the fifth, and hit by a pitch and scored in the seventh. Check out and follow Yes Network on TikTok for more content. And it's so important now with two outs that the infielders, I mean, you, you've seen some ground balls get through the infield. Anything you can do as an infielder to keep the ball from getting to the outfield now, dive, knock it down. Anything because Rayleigh on second base is moving on contact with two outs and will score easily if the ball leaves the infield. Runner at second. And the pitch to Diaz is a strike. Two outs. Yankees lead by one, nine to eight, top of the eighth inning. Luke Rayleigh at second base. Another strike. The sweeper 0 and 2. What does he go with here? Well, you started him off with a sinker, and then you went to the sweeper. I mean, you 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 can go sinker in off the plate to set up away, or you can just stick with that sinker and try to keep him in the infield. The 0-2. One with the slider. Make sure to keep it off the plate, which he did in the count one and two. Diaz, 10 home runs, 24 runs batted in. Swing and a miss. No, no, a foul ball. As Trevino could not hold on. Let's see how close he came to holding on. A uh, slider. A little break at the end. Mm. I just don't imagine. I mean, it, it's hard to imagine, Michael. I mean, when that ball goes off a of catcher's glove, how much torque it pulls that thumb by hitting the you know, and not staying in the pocket. sinker at 98 but again uh, you see the location out over the plate up the sinker ball pitchers want to be down when you get that downward movement instead of that kind of tail and the pitch 
Trevino will be glad when this at bats over. He's taking him off the face mask, off the thumb, everywhere. He thought this was a day off. Yeah. Epic battle here between Holmes and Diaz. On deck is Franco, two and two, with two outs, runner at second. And the pitch missed off the plate, three and two. That was 99 miles an hour. Yeah, at both pitches he was trying to hit out that outside corner now again. I mean you could go back to that slider and try to get a swing and a miss but Diaz such a tough at bat. off and again the two seamer he tried to run back it was close don't know if it got there but a big out for Clay Holmes and the Yankees Luke Raley takes over in right field so judge has two home runs there have been 36 multi homer games for the Yankees against the Rays. Rizzo had one last night. No Yankee has ever hit three home runs in a game against them. We told you this is Judge's 29th multi home run game. He's never had a three homer game. One and two. There have been 36 three homer games in Yankee history by 25 different players. Including Reggie Jackson and Babe Ruth in the World Series. And not today for Judge as he's down looking. Although the way this game is going, he might get another at bat. <laughs> they are battling, no doubt about it. Uh, this looks like Aaron Judge kind of looking away, and all of a sudden, ball in kind of locks you up as a hitter. In your mind, you're looking for that ball away from a lefty. 95 right on the inside corner. Owen one on Rizzo. Rizzo's two for four. Yankees have to uh, really uh, run the gauntlet in the ninth inning. Coming up for the Rays, Franco, Low, and a Rosarena. Two, three, and four. Yankees lead by one. Looks like they'll go to Peralta again. Try to nail this down. Two and two on Rizzo. Rizzo laid down a bunt single in the sixth inning. Later came around to score. Push bunt to third. Two hits and four at bats. Let's work the count full. Still three and two. Bottom of the eighth inning here at the stadium. Yankees nine runs on nine hits. The Rays eight runs on 12 hits. And that's 
what Wandy has to, to navigate. Timeout by Rizzo. Really battling. Just not overmatched by left handed pitching. Just not. Came into the game hitting 371 against lefties. And now that number goes up. Single right center. Rizzo, third hit of the day. Yankees baseball on yes is brought to you in part by Delta, the official airline of the New York Yankees. Delta, keep climbing. You know what's really hard to do as a hitter, Michael? If you're a left-handed hitter and you're getting pounded time and time again inside, it's very hard to stick with your approach. But finally, you see, he finally misses out over the plate. Rizzo stays with his approach and continues to hit line drives off the lefties. LeMahieu takes a strike. Owen oh 2. LeMayu today is one for three with a walk and a run scored. Lined out sharply to short in the first, single to right in the fourth, grounded to short in the fifth, walked and scored in the sixth. Did he go? Yes, he did. LeMayu down on strikes, so two down. And that'll bring up Bader. Good call. Yeah, it looks like the body kind of took the bat head around in front of the plate. Quiet night for Bader. 0 for 3 with a walk. This is where every once in a while as a runner at first base and Rizzo not known as a base stealer but you just go on first movement uh, you know with two outs you just try to cheat and sneak a steal in but Diaz still holding him on closely all the way Right there is the second baseman, Lau. He'll step on the bag, and that'll do it. All right, everybody. Buckle up. Ninth inning. Coming up, Wandy Peralta coming in. Oh, for Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay led 6-0 after four and a half. But the Yankees with four in the fifth and five in the sixth. Took a 9-6 lead. Tampa Bay clawed back with two more, so they pulled to within one. That's the season so far for Wandy. This will be his 18th game. Saturday crowd here at the stadium has seen a barn burner. We've got two barn burners in you today. Mm -hmm. well, brought it out again. I think it's appropriate. Uh -huh. Franco takes a strike on the outside corner from Peralta. Fifth pitcher used by Aaron Boone. Cortez started. Cordero, Marinaccio, Holmes, and Peralta. Soft ground ball of Volpe. He fields. One away. Hey, after this game, you have to stay tuned after the final out for today's WB Mason Yankees postgame. Get highlights, analysis, and player reaction from the clubhouse. Plus, Aaron Boone on the manager's report. That's all coming up next on Yes and the Yes app. It's so strange. Franco hits that ball, doesn't even run. To first base. And they are going to send up Bethancourt to pinch hit for Josh Lowe. 
And Josh Lowe, as hot as he has been, his splits against left-handed, not really good. So Kevin Cash has no hesitation to pinch hit. Uh, again, huge series so far for Lowe, taking the bat out of his hand with Peralta. He has not started any of the eight games where the opposing team started a left-handed. So 0 and 1 on the pinch hitter Bethancourt. 0 and 2. You know, to your point, Michael, I was reading about the old, you know, kind of when the the platoon thing came. Casey Stengel was one of the first guys mm -hmm. that they considered a platoon player. That goes way back. He platooned a lot when he managed the Yankees. Well, you didn't have to do that with Nicky. Nicky just turned around to the other side. Oh, I, I just I could only dream about that. I used to talk to Bernie all the time. Or hey, you just don't know how lucky you are to be able to hit on both sides of the plate. One and two on the pinch hitter Bethancourt. So Bethancourt, the last player on the bench for Kevin Cash. Or Rosarena is on deck. Reaches out and spoils it. Peralta, the lone lefty in the Yankee bullpen, trying to close the game for the second game in a row. Bounces up, fouls it off himself. We've talked about it before. The Yankees love the fearlessness of Peralta. Swing and a miss. Two away. One out to go. He's gone to the slider. He did it last night, too, after the changeup. See him turn this one over, get it in there. That is his third pitch. Comfortable enough to get a strike out there. Pitches outside to a Rosarena. A 370 hitter against lefties. He hits everybody, really. He has three hits today. Clips the outside corner, one and one. Crowd of 44,714 here at the stadium. That one is ripped down the left field line. Foul. A strike away. Most of the crowd standing here at the stadium. A hot, steamy Saturday afternoon. A one run ball game in the ninth inning. Yankees lead 9 8. Grounded foul. Is he DJ, DJ LeMayhew yesterday or a couple balls down the line at this position now? You're not going to get a ball down the line without him getting a glove on the playing no doubles. And the pitch. Three and two. Brandon Lau is on deck. Being very careful with a Rosarena. Who has 10 home runs and 34 ribbies. Meeting on the mound. I think Rizzo sensed that he was starting to to get it going a little bit too quick. Hey, you know what? Let's realize what we got going here. 
But if you break down two of the tougher routes, you got Diaz and you got a Rosarina, and their their at bats become long because they don't give up, they don't give in, and they seldom leave the strike zone. So you got to make three good pitches to get them out. Three and two. Two outs, ninth inning. The payoff is high, and a Rosarina works a walk, so the tying run is on first. Nothing coming too easy in this game. So now it's lefty lefty. Lau pinch hit in the seventh inning and broke an 0 for 25 slide with a single center. Jumps on the first pitch and grounds it foul. Again we talk about it Michael such a good pitch right there a sinker at 96 on the uh, right on the hands of a left handed hitter kind of sets up the whole at bat. Chasing a Rosarena back. Again, one strike away. Aaron Judge with two home runs. Yankees down 6 nothing at one point. Came all the way back. They lead 9-8. A strike away. One and two. Well, back to back sliders there after setting him up on that first pitch in on his hands. He's going back back to back slider. That one a little bit too far off the plate. Peralta sets. Still one and two. The Rays come into this game at 30 and 10, not going down quietly in this one. Another foul ball, getting big, hearty cuts against Wandy Peralta. Lau, a 226 lifetime hitter against lefties. Peralta does neutralize lefties. Another foul ball. I went in at bat. And if you're Kevin Cash, you've got to appreciate the at bats that your hitters are putting together. And if you're Aaron Boone, you've got to appreciate Peralta just continually challenging him with strikes. One, two. Well there are 44,000 people here standing. If you're at home you're probably rocking back and forth taking deep breaths maybe holding your breath. It's that sort of game. The Yankees against the Rays trying to take the second game. Of this four game set to make it 2 1 Yanks. It's 9 8 Yanks in this one. Another foul ball. Trying to find something to put Lau away. This will be the ninth pitch of the at bat. Another foul ball. Uh, what do you do if you're Peralta here? Well, Where do you go you to? You have you've used everything. Your two seamer in early. Then he's gone away from it. It's gone slider, slider, and a bunch of changeups. Still, uh, you cannot guess with Peralta. A Rosarena leads. One two count on Brandon Lau. Time call. So he was going with the fastball inside. Looks as if the umpire is pointing that Trevino called the timeout. Not Lau. The one two fly ball 
Left field. Cabrera is there. Cabrera makes the play, and the Yankees win 9-8. If yesterday was considered the best game of the year, well, this game just said, hold my beer. Yankees win 9-8. Tremendous win, Michael, believe me. When you're down six to nothing with McClanahan on the hill, you don't expect much, but boy, Aaron Judge, couple home runs. And I don't know, are you seeing changing to the guard with Peralta? Couple clean saves from him. And now left-handers 0 for 22 against Wandy Peralta this year. And a huge win for the New York Yankees. Amazing win, an amazing win yesterday. This one even more amazing. Yankees win 9-8. We'll try to break it down in the postgame after that.